You know what it is. Let's go. Geeks are back on the map. We got UFC Nashville picks and predictions. We're going to run through the entire card from the bottom to the top. Prelims through the main card. Let's get it going. We got the first fight. Flyweight scrap. Ode Osborne, 12 and 5, coming out against Asu Almabev, 17 and 2. Uh, I'm taking Asu. Asu, the prospect, making his debut in the UFC. Guy's an absolute murderer, assassin. Uh, Ode, chinny at 125, always red flags. Uh, he's definitely a threat. He's good. But uh, I'm taking Asu to kind of make a big, big splash in his debut here. What do you got, Goose? I'm going to pick. Uh, Ode Osborne here. I like the veteran fighting against a hype prospect making his debut. Um, it is a spot that normally that's an auto pick for me. All right, I'm sure it'll balance itself out, but these veterans seem to be winning more than the hyped prospects in these cases. So I'm gonna keep riding it. Ode Osborne, pretty good everywhere, pretty electric on the feet. I think he's going to show this guy some looks and put him in some danger that he hasn't been in before. And, um, yeah, if Asu can go out and really put it on Osborne, I'll be surprised. But then again, he is a very high prospect. Either way, I'm going to go with Ode Osborne to uh, get a knockout. All right. What do you got, front kick? Yeah, I'm riding with Ode Osborne, but I'm not too sure about the KO. I'm, running, I'm going to go with decision. I think – uh. It's, they're kind of be going to be grappling and laying on, trying to lay on each other. Both these dudes are more, or Asu Al-Mabayev is more of a grappling-oriented guy. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Ode could lay some hands on him, but I'm going to just ride decision. All right, sounds good. We're moving to the next one. We got a featherweight scrap, Sean Woodson, 9-1-1, one, and one, coming out against Marion Santos. Myron Santos, Myron. That's thirteen and one. Goose, what were you about to say, real quick? Because I thought he was fighting Dennis Bazuchka. Okay, that's what I got too. Because he got it got canceled with Butler Garcia, and then this is the third one he's got scheduled. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm a, with if the if it's the Dennis one, I'm a ride. I'm gonna just ride with the sniper. Um, he got caught, but uh, he's coming back. I'm gonna ride with the sniper knockout. That's what I got for that one. Sean Woodson KO. Goosey. Um, honestly, Dennis is pretty good. He's pretty tough. I like his style. He gets inside. And I just I'm gonna fade Woodson off his last performance. Very underwhelming. Um, just struggled. The chin wasn't there, the grappling really wasn't there until Don is not the best wrestler. Uh, so I'm just gonna take Dennis Bazuchka. I think uh should get some decent dog value. Let's ride it. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I would probably ride the Dennis Wave too, uh, if, it, if that matchup comes down to it. So let's move into this next one. We got a flyweight scrap. Uh Jake Hadley, 10 and 1, coming out against Cody Durden, 15, 4 and 1. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if this is an underdog pick, but I'm taking Cody Durden in this one. Um Jake Hadley, you definitely, you know, great prospect. He's, you know, struggled in the beginning and then he's shown that, you know, he's, he's evolving, but you know, Cody Durden is kind of just a hell matchup for anybody. And uh, I don't think Jake Hadley is going to be able to um, handle this kind of wrestling that Cody Durden is going to bring. So I'm taking Cody Durden to land a whole bunch of takedowns. I know that Jake Hadley's jujitsu is kind of wild, but uh, I'm going to rely on Durden to at least bank some rounds here. I'm not saying he's going to get a finish, um, but I definitely think he's going to get a lot of control time in this, enough to sway the judges' opinions. Give me Cody Durden by split decision. What do you got, Goosey? Going to go with Hadley here. Uh, what is he, the White Kong? I think he's just going to be a little bit bigger in there. Durden's really taking this on short notice. I think it might be a tough weight cut for him because – I guess he's still scheduled to fight in September. I don't – it's a weird situation. Either way, Hadley's been preparing for this fight, and I think he's pretty dominant at 125. He got a tough matchup off rip. The veteran versus UFC debuter matchups are tough, but he's looked good since, and I think that the power and just the, that constant threat is going to be enough to get Durden out of there. I'm going to go Hadley inside the distance. What do you got, front kick? 
kind of on the same page as Goose, except for I, th I don't think he's going to get him out of there. I th I'm thinking he's going to go to decision. Durden, I think he's, in my eyes, he's tough. Uh, it's going to be a good scrap, though. Give me Hadley, decision. All right, we're moving into the next one. We got another featherweight scrap here. Billy Quarantillo, 17 and 5, coming out against Damon Jackson, 22, 5 and 1. Uh, Damon Jackson's a dog, certified dog. Uh, so is Billy Q, man. These guys are going to go at it for sure. This is a good style clash. Billy Quarantillo, probably the more evolved fighter on the feet, probably got more weapons, um, definitely more athletic, just more agile in there, Great, greater movement. Damon Jackson, though, is kind of just like a hammer. I mean, this guy can wrestle hard, and he does have like a stiff 1-2, one, 1-1, one, one, that he just kind of attacks and walks forward with guys at. So I think Quarantillo has the slight edge here. Um if Damon's a big underdog, that's definitely something to look at. But I definitely uh, – I'll ride with Quarantillo giving him the edge in this one just just because if this fight stays on the feet, he should be beating up Damon pretty good. What do you got, uh, Goosey? Going with Billy Q. Uh, I love me some Damon Jackson, always entertaining. But I think that constant pressure of Billy Q is just going to erode away at Jackson over time. Billy Q likes to stay in your face, mixing the grappling, throwing those looping hooks, overhands, all that good stuff. And uh, he loves to get in there and brawl. I think the fans will get behind him. And I think uh, Billy Q gets it done. Probably decision. What do you got, front kick? Yeah, I'm torn. Like Goosey said, love us some Damon Jackson. Um Billy Q, I'm going to favor him with the hands a little bit. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, dude, I mean, I'm going a, I'm to a ride with Billy Q. I'm going to ride with Goose on this one. Billy Q, Billy Q, and over, just over. All right, Goose moving on to the next scrap. one. Fair enough, we got a welterweight scrap here. Jeremiah Wells, 12-2-1, coming out against Carlston Harris, 18-5-0. I'm going to take Jeremiah Wells here. This guy is an absolute – specimen dude this guy is so freaking strong at 170 um and his jujitsu is wild so i'm thinking jeremiah wells is gonna be able to kind of put this put this fight down in the first round so give me jeremiah wells round one sub carlston harris definitely scary if this fight you know gets into that second round definitely gonna get really really shaky there um but i'm gonna take jeremiah wells to get it done what do you got goose Going with the dog, Carlson Harris here. Um, I just think, obviously, there's danger in that first round, but if these two guys go in there and fight a whole fight, I see Carlson Harris uh, really pulling away at the end, and even early, I see him winning some exchanges. You know, he's pretty wild on the feet. He does get hit. That's the that's the main reason where, where I'm worried in this one. Obviously, Wells has crazy pop, but Harris has a good chin. And he's just wild and dangerous everywhere. Like, he's always throwing up subs. He's throwing hammer fists. Like, you never know what's coming from him. And I think he's going to catch Wells with something here. I'm going to go Harris inside the distance. Interesting. What do you got, front kick? The line is pretty close. Um, I liked uh, – earlier, I liked Wells. I like what Goose is thinking, too. Um but in my head, damn, bro, this is a this is a pretty this is gonna be a scrap. This might just be one of the best fights on the of the night if they come out get after it. I'm gonna I'm gonna just ride with uh I'm gonna go with the under. I think either or could finish it. <clears throat> and bro, Wells for having a win his last fight, a lot of damage. He got dropped pretty bad twice by Semmelsberger. Yeah, he did. All right, we're moving into the next one. We got a uh, bantamweight scrap here, a featured bout. Rayoni Barcelos, seventeen and four, coming out against Kyler Phillips, who is ten and two and returning from a USADA suspension. Shout out the kid, uh, man. Hey, Rayoni has let me down. Not gonna lie, these last couple outings, um, I hate to say it, but he is he is slowly eroding, and um, he's just not not the same Rayoni Barcelos that we used to get. So. With that being said, 
I'm going to take the uh, young stallion coming off the PEDs or whatever the hell it was that uh, was keeping this guy absolutely fueled to the max. So he's going to be throwing wild shit. I like how Kyler Phillips' fight style. It's it's freaking electric. He comes from the, the MMA lab or whatever it is down there. And, uh, man, they, they really train some, some wild stand-up maneuvers. So I'm thinking he's going to throw some wild shit. Marcelo's probably not going to be too equipped for it. So, but I'll probably take him by decision. What do you got, front kick? I got Kyler by KO on this one. Um, yeah, I think Rayoni's chin might be a little hindered, but uh, yeah, I mean, I love the guy, love the guy, love the way he fights. But give me, I'm a fade, I'm fading Rayoni. Give me Kyler by KO. What do you got, Goose? Yeah, we were just talking about guys that took some damage in their last fight, and Rowney Barcelos definitely took some damage in his last fight. That was a brutal, just uppercut KO finish from Umar Nurmagomedov late in his career. He's coming back pretty quick. I mean, I don't think that does him any favors. And Kyler Kyler Phillips, uh, just his like matrix kind of funky style in general has thrown – Ronnie Barcelos off in the past. You know, he's lost to guys like Timur Valiev, uh, Victor Henry, shout out the boy. And I think that Kyler Phillips just kind of falls into that same stylistic, just tough matchup, you know, where Barcelos is really looking to come forward, be very technical. These guys that can mix it up and hit you with some weird shit uh, tend to give him problems. I think Kyler Phillips gets it done. Probably it's KO. All right, hell yeah, we're moving to the next one. We're going to the main card here. The opening scrap is Ignacio Bahamondes, for fourteen and four, coming out against Ludovic Klein, nineteen and four and one. I'm gonna take Ignacio. I know that there's a huge wrestling threat in this matchup, but I just think that Ignacio has been training with the right people. His jujitsu's definitely elevating. He's dangerous as hell. He's always in there to finish which is going to you know, allow him to get into a lot of escapes, a lot of scrambles. So I think that as long as this fight is at a rapid, insane pace, which is something Ludovic likes to do, uh, I think he's playing right into a dangerous game, which is you know, probably going to end in a Bahamondas devastating style fashion finish. Um, and I'm going to take it in the third round because Ludovic slows down. Um, you kind of see it in almost all of his fights. I mean, he he really drags to that finish line. So a guy like Ignacio with all these front kicks and spinning kicks and and just damaging stand up maneuvers, man, I'm taking him. Round three. What do you got, front kick? I'm riding with Ignacio Bahamondes on this one. Um, I see what you're saying about the wrestling threat. Everyone knows. Ludovic's probably just going to be shooting. <clears throat> but Ignacio's got a good takedown defense. And I like the kid. He's flashy. Um, I'm not too sure about a KO. If I really had to pick, I'd probably just go decision. But do as you wish. What do you like, Goosey? See, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Ignacio here. There's definitely a threat of early knockout because – Ludovic Klein throws some bombs, and if he is getting inside well, he's going to be putting it on Ignacio. But how I see the fight playing out, uh, Bahamondes uses his length well. I think it's going to be hard for Klein to get inside. He's going to have to use a lot of energy, and I see him just wearing down. Come the second round, he's going to be real tired, and that's when Ignacio is going to start stuffing takedowns, hitting him with some good shots. Ultimately, I see this fight ending via submission with Klein kind of just shooting an exhausted takedown, getting that neck snatched up. Ignacio. Hell yeah. All right, we're into the next one. We got Tanner Bozier coming out against Alexa Kammer. Tanner Bozier 20 and 10, Kammer 6 and 2. Uh, I'm going to take Kammer here. Uh, the the thing that I really like about him, he he's a guy, he's a young guy, he's 27. He's got a lot of potential. We've seen him in the UFC a handful of times. Um, he's good. Um, he's lost to guys like Nikolai, Negamaranu, and William Knight. With William Knight, that looks terrible. I get it. Um, but he, you know, he's knocking out Fabio Charant. You know, he's beating Justin Ledet. Uh, 
I just think that, you know, he hasn't fought since 2021. You know, he's had the time to work on what he needed to, and that was the gas tank. He's always look he always looks great, world class in the first round, but he can never keep that pace. Um, so I'm thinking that we're gonna see a new camera, an upgraded camera, and I like the odds on that. So what do you like, front kick? Shit, you know, every every fight night there's at least one underdog that hits. And uh this one may just be it. Tanner, Bozier taking L's to uh I mean, his only in his last five <clears throat> fights, his only win is against Vince St. Pru, who's you know out of his prime. So I'm gonna ride with underdog Alex Sa Kammer on this one. KO, give me the KO. What do you got, Goosey? Damn, I didn't think we would be sweeping this, but we are. I'm gonna go with Kammer here and the ultimate. Just kind of stay away from and let this fight happen. You know, uh, Kammer. He probably got better in the last two years. Ultimately, Bozier, I, him coming down to light heavyweight, he was just a small heavyweight. That's why he was faster than those guys. I don't think he's going to have a speed advantage. I don't think maybe the cardio is a little better, but skill for skill, light heavyweight's a better division than heavyweight. I'm just I'm going to go with Kamer here throwing dart at the board, and I, whatever. All right, let's go. We're moving to the next one. We got a featherweight scrap. Gavin Tucker, 13-2, and two, coming out against Diego Lopez. Or is it Lopes? 21-6. and six. Um, I'm going to take Diego here. Just super dangerous. Showed us that he can almost beat Mosfar Evloev on short notice. Kind of all you really need to see here. Gavin Tucker is going to really need to take a big, big leap in, uh, in what he's been displaying in the octagon to compete here. Diego's going to be dangerous in pretty much every position of this fight. So I'm taking my finish. Uh, I would just say inside the distance to be safe. What do you got, Kusi? Diego Lopes. Um, I think that Gavin Tucker is taking too much time off. And just in general, I think he's going to have a little ring rust. Skill for skill, it's probably pretty close. But I think Diego Lopes just kind of his wild style and – Gavin Tucker's style, I think, with ring rust on Tucker, it leads to Diego Diego Lopez catching him with some. Whether it's a wild punch, submission, I think uh, Lopez gets it done inside the distance. What do you got, front kick? Yeah, man, this one's tough because I want to ride with uh, Gavin Tucker, but uh. Yeah, Diego is a dangerous guy. Um, I'm gonna just I'm gonna ride with the. Uh, I'm gonna ride with Diego on this. I'm gonna just stick with you guys on this one. Uh, Diego, give me a submission. I feel like a sub it might pop up. All right, fair enough. We're moving to the next one. We got Dustin Jacoby, eighteen and seven, coming out against Kenny Nijoku, who was twelve and three. Uh. I'm going to take Kenny Nijoku because I'm tired of getting the, his fights wrong. And this is, of course, he's definitely going to lose this fight just because I picked him. Uh, 100,000% now that I'm thinking about it. I'll just leave it. But, uh, man, he's just so fucking big. So, like, if, if anybody wants to try to, like, grapple him, it's just, like, impossible because it's like trying to move a mountain. And then, like, you stand up with him and he kind of just like puts all his limbs extended and it's like, it's like you can't get through it. So I'm going to be interested to see how Dustin Jacoby kind of chop, tries to chop this tree down. Uh, because if Kennedy, uh, if his controller is hooked up to uh save Saud, then uh, he should be, he should be just fine here. But sometimes his controller dies and that's when you get, it's really worrisome. So what do you got goosey? Going with Kennedy. Uh, I think Jacoby, I was not impressed with his last performance. He fought Azamat, who a lot of power, pretty good striker, but he broke his arm at the end of the second round. And Jacoby's still going for takedowns and stuff in the third, even though he's supposed to be the striker. Um, either way, I think that Kennedy's going to put pressure on him and make him fold here. Jacoby, I mean, sometimes he shows up ready to go, sometimes – He's getting caught with just random stuff. I think Kennedy's going to put pressure on him, make him fold. 
I'm going Kennedy round two. Interesting. What do you got, front kick? Yeah, I'm gonna ride with Kennedy on this one. Uh, the reach and the height is just something that I think Dustin's gonna have a hard time getting at. I think Dustin's one of his best ways it'll be chopping at the legs. I feel like that's one of his, a good option going against Kennedy here, but uh, give me Kennedy decision. All right, fair enough. We're moving to the co-main event here. We got Jessica Andrade, 24 and 11, coming out against Tatiana Suarez, who is 9 and 0 and a phenomenal grappler, which is exactly what, you know, Jessica Andrade just got kind of exposed for in her last fight. So I'm going to just ride that trend. Not going to think too hard about it. I know that Andrade is uh, definitely a, a crazy big threat, and Tatiana Suarez hasn't exactly been in the octagon. Um, the most active fighter, I should say. So it's sketchy, hundred percent. But let's get a takedown and let's get a sub off. I'm here for it. What do you got, front kick? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely Tatiana sub. Uh, round. No, nah, I'm just gonna go Tatiana sub. <laughs> I'm not gonna predict the round. Well, she's been sp- spending a lot of time with Patchy Mix, and and. Rumors are that Patchy Mix is probably one of the most elite grapplers on the planet. So round one, I'm sure she's getting a lot of good tips. What do you got, Goosey? Going Jessica Andrade. Uh, I thought process behind this. I looked at the line. Tatiana Suarez was minus four twenty five. Not doing it. Not doing that at all. Um, I think yeah, she's a pretty good grappler, but if she gets stuck on the feet. Andrade's going to piece her up. And I think that Andrade, I mean, wrestling defense kind of got exposed by Aaron Blanchfield, who is most likely the best female grappler in that division right now, maybe in the whole UFC, to be honest. So Andrade, I think Suarez, she was away from the game for a while. I didn't really love her last performance. She ended up getting a sub, but it was not the best. I think uh, we got a little bit of recency bias against Andrade. She's still good. She's got two tough matchups, and I think that plus 300, whatever, so splash it. I'm going Andrade. Fair enough. We're moving to the main event here. We got the Sandman, Corey Sanhagen, who is uh, 16-4 and four, en route to his title shot, coming out against Rob Font, who is 20-6. Uh, and six coming off a huge knockout win against up-and-coming prospect Adrian Yanez. And, you know, that was sweet. So that lines him up for this. We had uh, Umar Namagomedov fall out of this. And now it is a catchweight bout at 140. Um, I'm taking Corey Sanhagen. I think that, you know, I think the Cheeto Varia fight is kind of all you really need to see um, because that was just a couple fights ago. You know, Rob Font hasn't added anything crazy to his game. Um, Corey Sanhagen is the one that was probably preparing for wrestling in this matchup. So, you know, I'm not wor- worried about, you know, Rob Font taking this to anywhere, you know, it shouldn't be. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, Sanhagen throws some crazy shit. I know I'm a huge Cheeto guy and uh, I'm a fan of all his kind of wheelhouse kicks and stuff. But Sanhagen does it better. And uh, I think he's going to be hitting Rob Font with all kinds of shit. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see another Corey Sanhagen highlight reel devastation, devastating blow. So I don't know how it happens. It's probably going to be some crafty ass shit. It's going to be awesome to watch in slow motion after guaranteed. But uh, that's kind of what I'm riding. I'm going to take it in like the I'd probably sprinkle three, four and five for Corey just because I think it, that it's going to come in those rounds. So what do you got front kick? Definitely see what you're saying. Uh, I mean, both these dudes coming off of great wins. We were there in person for that Rob Font KO in Miami. But uh, Corey, I think, is on a different level nowadays. He's younger. Um, he's he's taller. Th- the reach is not there. But, I mean, he's quick as hell. I think Rob um, is going to need to move a lot to get Sanhagen and Sanhagen is just elusive. I'm riding with Sanhagen and um, I don't know about knockout, but 
very very viable i like that three four five later later sounds good font's a tough motherfucker though facts what do you got goose austin cartel i'm definitely riding around font i actually feel weirdly good about it to be honest with you um but i think he's gonna outbox him on the feet the wrestling probably going to cancel out. Honestly, I could see Rob Font having the better wrestling to be, to keep it a buck with you because I mean, look at, he he's had success grappling before go down his, go down his stats. All right. You look at it. Who does he lose to guys with like crazy pop in their hands? I don't think that Corey's got it like that. You know, he's a good striker. He's going to bring the volume, but given Rob Font has, slightest of reach advantage he's got one inch but he uses that jab very well i think it's going to keep sandhagen off him ultimately i think he beats him up i don't know if it's decision or ko but um i think it's going to be rob font tonight i feel good he's pretty crisp in there and then yeah let's go rob font boston cartel underdogs they're barking Wow, what a what a finish to that. I'm glad I glad I went front kick first. All right, those are the picks and predictions. Drop a like, comment, subscribe, hit us on Instagram, Twitter. I don't think we yeah. TikTok? Yeah, yeah. Let's all go. That shit. All right. Geeks were freaking smothering hot last week. We were all over that. Justin Gaethje by KO. Easy shmoney. We out ya. Thanks for watching.